off. Check out this hit by Dwayne Knight. You better beware when the hard-hitting Hokies come around. For West Virginia and Don Nalen, their winning as coach, the start of the 93 season is its best in four years. Starts with offense there, too. Quarterback Jake Keltzner is so cool in making things happen for the number one scoring offense in the Big East. Mountaineers also come at you with the Big East's third best ground game, led by Robert Walker. Completing the package is the defense. And there's nothing subtle about the style of number 41, middle linebacker Wes Richardson. Coming up, Virginia Tech in West Virginia, a shootout in Morgantown, and the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Conference Game of the Week. Today's matchup features the Hokies of Virginia Tech taking on the 25th ranked Mountaineers of West Virginia. Threatening skies here in Morgantown shouldn't dampen the enthusiasm one bit. I'm Dave Sims with Todd Blackledge. Good to have you with us for our game today that features a Virginia Tech team that has been tested by the Miami Hurricanes. 21-2, they lost to them, but played very well. Meanwhile, for West Virginia, they're unbeaten, but they have not really been tested as Virginia Tech has been. You're exactly right, Dave. They've won three ball games, but against teams that combined have only won to end the Big East in passing efficiency. Look at the difference in completion percentage. 47% a year ago, 65% this year. Now, I talked to quarterback coach Ricky Bustle yesterday. He said the biggest difference in Maurice has been that Maurice has really taken a new approach to preparing for the game. He's watching more film. He's studying it. He's taking more pride in his work ethic and how he gets ready to play the game. That's been the difference for Maurice DeShazo. For West Virginia, Jake Kelchner off to a great start, completing over 70% of his passes. Six touchdowns. Look, no mistakes. Zero interceptions. Kelchner only threw six touchdowns all of last season, and he's found a new big play guy to go to in wide receiver Jay Kearney. The two have hooked up for a couple long scoring touchdowns already this season. Jay Kearney is a game breaker. Antonio Freeman for Virginia Tech. Defensively now for Virginia Tech, Kenny Brown, linebacker is impressive. If you like linebacker play, he will come up and rock you. Kenny Brown has great speed. That's his greatest asset. He really gets after people. Now he's made a big switch moving from outside linebacker where he started last year to inside linebacker, but he's still leading the team in tackles average over 10 a game and he's an impact player has been the last couple years for the Hokies for West Virginia the big guy in the defense is their quarterback on defense is Mike Collins he's the strong safety he's beginning his fourth year as the starter at that position he's a guy who makes all the calls in the secondary and he has a real nose for the football he has the ability to make a lot of big plays I think that's been his signature for this defense big play after big play he is terrific. Made a big one last week against Missouri. We're moments away from our opening kickoff. Get things going here at Morgantown, West Virginia. It's the Hokies and the Mountaineers. We'll be back with the kickoff after these words from our local stations. Guys here and also... The ballpark is not filled yet because there was an accident down on Interstate 79, about 20 miles south of here. A couple of tractor trailers had an accident, and folks are being tied up trying to get to Morgantown. Temperature 65 degrees, humidity 75 percent. See your wind could be a factor today, and a chance of rain in our forecast. West Virginia won the toss. They have deferred, and Virginia Tech will get first chance with the offense on the field today. Let's take a look at our rolling rock. Chalk talk, Todd Blackledge. Well, I think we have a very evenly matched ball game today, and so there's certain things that will stand out. Number one, the turnovers. Who protects the ball the most? Both these teams coming in have already fumbled the ball eight times. That's a big key today. Secondly, field position. Who has the short field to work with for most of the game? This revolves around your kicking game, your coverage, and also penalties. And thirdly, and, and probably most importantly, first down efficiency. Both these teams like to establish the run. They're not very good when they get in third down in a lot of passing long situations. So look to see both teams try to average at least five yards on first down. Significant note here that the visiting ball club has won four of the last five games. And the last seven games have been decided by 12 points or less. So that's why we expect a close, hard-hitting, rock'em, sock'em kind of game. There's Frank Beamer. 
47 years old in his seventh year at Virginia Tech. Record of 27, 41 and 2. Don Nealon, winning his coach at West Virginia, 57 years old, 14th year at Mountaineer Field. Record of 95, 55 and 4. Kicking off for the Mountaineers is Todd Sauerbrunn. Five of his six kickoffs against Missouri last week went into the end zone. Deep to receive for Virginia Tech, Wade Thomas, Tommy Edwards. And we are underway. A low line drive kick will go into the end zone and through. And yet another touchback for Todd Sauerbrunn and West Virginia. There's a look at the Virginia Tech originator at quarterback, Maurice DeShazo. The offensive line with Barry McMahon. Pine, the All-American candidate, hasn't given up a sack in three years. Backs in receivers. DeShazo, Swarm, Thomas, Freeman. Big play receiver, 20 yards per catch. Sanders and Burke. Burke, a good blocking tight end. First play from scrimmage. Virginia Tech in the eye. And they give it to number 42, Dwayne Thomas. Thomas gets across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Number 45, Derek Wiley, Wiley in on the stop. The offensive line, defensive line for West Virginia. Gaskins and Hawkins, Perkins, Wiley, Tifoni, Richardson, and Brown is outstanding in the middle. But this award candidate, Mike Collins, one of the best secondary men, strong safeties in the game. Second and nine, here's DeShazo. Throwing and completes it outside. The number three, Steve Sanders. And he's across the 30 for first down. Tifoni makes the stop for West Virginia. Just a safe little pass now. You try to get your confidence for your quarterback to Shays. A little three-step drop, throw the hitch. Now Aaron Beasley's the cornerback for West Virginia, playing the wide side of the field. Look at all the cushion he gives. Respecting the speed of Sanders, that's an easy throw for quarterback to Shazo. Shazo getting a good rhythm early on here. Checking off at the line of scrimmage now. Audible. Broken play, DeShazo's in trouble. Back against the green. 56 with a great tackle. Tim Brown brings him down a loss on the play of about four yards. I really think they have something going here at West Virginia. The Mountaineers 3-0. What appeared to happen that time is DeShazo went with the audible, and I think the line heard it, but the tailback, Dwayne Thomas, who should have got the football, didn't hear it. He took off thinking it was going to be a pitch. DeShazo came straight back to give a handoff, and he had nowhere to go. And you can see the good coverage and speed of Tim Brown stayed right there and made the play. Second and 14, DeShazo throwing the screen. The knee was touched. They didn't give it to him. They completed the play of Thomas. And he's knocked out of bounds at about the 32-yard line by Tommy Orr. But he got away with one there. Looked like the knee hit. Kind of close. West Virginia snuffed that play out pretty well. Steve Dunlap, the defensive coordinator, knew that that was a favorite play. Second and long situation. Tech likes to go with the double screen, throw it back to their tailback. They were in great position. Just one little missed tackle, and Thomas was able to bring it back close to the line of scrimmage. Big third down play for Maurice DeShazo and Virginia Tech in its first possession. Sprint out to the right. It's a block. Goes down field. And it's incomplete. Intended for number four, Cornelius White, for Virginia Tech. And the Mountaineers have forced the punt. And the crowd here at Mountaineer Field is really into it. As much excitement as they've seen here at Mountaineer Field since 1989. The Mountaineers got off to a 3-0 start. Here's Robbie Colley. He's the punter, averaging 39-7. Deep to receive for West Virginia, Mike Baker. Short punt, bad punt. West Virginia will take advantage. And the Mountaineers will get the ball first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. A punt of only 34 yards. West Virginia will put it in play when we come back to Mountaineer Field. We'll be back after these messages. Football telecast is brought to you in part by your GM Good Wrench dealer. Hey, we want your business. Beat on this play, but this guy in the middle of the field, number 30, David Mayfield, he's the free safety. Now, Orr was expecting him to give him some help on this play, but watch. Mayfield's going to read the rollout, and he's going to favor that side of the field. Now, when DeShazo turns and throws back to the other side, 
Mayfield can't get there in time, and it's a touchdown for the Hokies. Cornelius White with the TD. 33 yards of coverage. Second catch of the year, first TD for Cornelius. Here's Ryan Williams kickoff. Kearney takes it inside the five. Got room, 25. To the 40. He's got a chance, he's gone. There's nobody got to catch him. A walk for Jake Kearney, 95 yards. And West Virginia strikes right back. But there is a flag back at the 20 yard line. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team during the return. John Nealon can't believe it. Take a look at this. This is a great setup on the return. Now look at the upper right hand corner of your screen. I think this is where the play is going to be. Right there, you can see it right there. And it's a key block because that's the first guy down for Tech. It's a clearly a block in the back on the defender. That opens the hole for Kearney, but still a great effort by Jay Kearney. And look at that hole that they had. We talked about the importance of field position, kick coverage. That was a definite breakdown in Virginia Tech's kick coverage. A big break there for the Hokies. First and 10 for the Mountaineers, backed up at the 10-yard line. Give it inside to Woodward, the fullback. Not a lot going on right there. He gets up close to the 10-yard line. Career numbers for Jake Keltzner out of Berwick High School in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Rich Bram had the most dominating game, said Don Nealon, that he's ever seen last week. Mike Baker, an outstanding wide receiver, is averaging 15.6 yards per catch. Second down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Second possession for WVU. Here's Kelsey under pressure. Runs into his own man, and he's sacked. Brought down by number 98, Waverly Jackson, a guy that defensive coordinator Phil O'Masian said people don't know who he is until after the game. Well, really, this was a great play by Jackson, but Kelchner trying not to make a mistake down near his own end zone, probably should have thrown this ball away because he held it an awful long time. Actually, when he ran into his tailback, Jimmy Gary there, that really threw him off. And that allowed Waverly Jackson to come in with the big sack. And you can see both teams doing quite well in that category this year. J.C. Price, number 59, and at right tackle for the Hokies. Big third down play for both teams. Third and 16. Kelsner. Got time. Under pressure. Cross the 10. And he'll be shy of the first down. As he's run out of bounds by Antonio Banks and Stacey Henley. It'll be another, it'll be a punt situation for the Mountaineers. Their first punt of the season of the game. We talked about the importance of first down. You can see what's happened to West Virginia the, the first couple series of the game. They've come up with third down and long situations, and, and those are tough to convert. I don't care how good of skill people you have. You're not going to do that on a daily basis. Great punt by Sauber. Here's Freeman. Wall left. Click, flag down. As Freeman's run out of bounds by number three, Matt Tafoni. 42-yard punt, nine-yard return. So mistakes hurting both teams. West Virginia had a 95-yard kickoff return for six, wiped out by a block in the back. Well, that's a tit for a tat right there. Same exact kind of penalty. On the return, illegal block in the back against the return team, first and 10. Marcus McClung right there, number 37. He's the guy who was guilty of the penalty. Timeout on the field, Virginia Tech leading West Virginia 7-0. We're back after these messages. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field at Morgantown, West Virginia. Maurice DeShazo's TD pass with 9.51 left first period. It's given Tech a 7-0 lead. Frank Beamer has a lot of good things to say about his quarterback who has really improved. 
Well, I think experience is a big thing, and, and experience has led to confidence. Uh, he's playing with more confidence. He's worked hard to be a good quarterback, but uh, just the uh, way he's handling, th handling things, the way he's checking off the line of scrimmage, the way he's running the football team, uh, you can just tell that confidence is, uh, is with him now. Shazo, last time the Hokies had the ball, nine plays, 76 yards, scored on a 30-yard TD pass to Cornelius White. 7.54 left, first period. Ryan Edmonds in it running back. Good stick in the middle. Derek Willie actually on the fake. It was a great fake as DeShazo on the keeper gets outside, and he gets up to the 40-yard line with a five-yard gain. Great open field tackle by the free safety David Mayfield, too. DeShazo's not an easy guy to corral out there in the open field. Other action in the Big East today. BC, Syracuse just underway. A little bit later, Georgia Southern at Miami. Miami prepping for the big one next week against Florida State. Temple at Rutgers later on. Louisville at Pittsburgh, nighttime action. Second down and five. That's the 40 to the 45. Renault White breaking tackles. Inside the 40, inside the 35-yard line before he's wrestled down by Mike Collins. Good-looking run by Renault White. He's a redshirt junior from Lafayette High School in Brooklyn, New York. 28-yard gain. The backs for Virginia Tech are not flashy, but they're durable, and they run straight ahead. This play starts off to the left. Good block by the center, Jim Pine, and then some broken tackles. Mayfield with a missed tackle right there. Mike Collins has to corral him, has to ride him down, but by that time, White picked up another seven, eight yards. Workmanlike backs for Virginia Tech. Do we have a sideline warning to the visitor's side of the field. A sideline warning to the visitor. They want the Virginia Tech ball club to stay off of that white boundary and even beyond the diagonal stripes there. Not to incur a penalty. You can see him working the working it now. Usually you got your strength coach or some, you know, one of your crazy assistant coaches. He's in charge of, of crowd control over there on the sideline. He's the guy that's got to back everybody up. Threaten to make them walk home to uh, Blacksburg if they don't do it. You bet. Get that special teams coach involved too. First and ten at the 33. Virginia Tech threatening again. Play action. The Shazo. Elite Wilder. Got a man down in the end zone. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Steve Sanders. Another penalty, though, back at the 37, and Frank Beamer and company can't believe it. Holding on the offense. In yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Say one thing, this Shazo showing a lot of poise under pressure, Todd. A lot of poise by DeShazo. Well, this is twice now that Maurice has eluded a good rush by Derek Wiley. Look, Wiley's got him in his sights. DeShazo gets to the outside. Now watch him make the adjustment. Tells his receiver, hey, break the route off and take it deep. It's a scramble adjustment by Sanders and a great throw and catch. Unfortunately, it's all coming back, but you can't practice that. That's a scramble adjustment. The wide receiver is running around when he sees uh, when he sees that happen, he turns and goes deep, and it's just kind of an on-the-move communication by the quarterback and wide receiver. Here's Jim Pine working in there against Buddy Hager. And that's, that's probably it right there. When DeShazo started to leave the pocket, he started to lose his man. He's off for the hole. Good stick. Coming up from the secondary, number 24, Tommy Orr on Renault White. The emotion really starting to climb the scale here at Morgantown. Well, so far, West Virginia has guessed right when Virginia Tech would run the option and they defensed it well. You see, Tafoni has the quarterback, Tommy Orr has the pitch man. He can't get, he gets by the block of Antonio Freeman, the wide receiver, and it's a big loss on the play. The option can give you big plays, but it can also give you some big losses if it's defensed well. Big second and 29. Desizzo, deep middle. Freeman stops, catches it, but he dropped it. They wipe it off. It looked like he would try to get possession on a trap covering for West Virginia number one, Van Washington. 
But Freeman was down there. DeShazer looked like he slipped a little bit trying to push off on his throw. Yeah, he didn't get much on that throw, and it was an underthrow, and, and really that's probably the only reason it was almost completed. Look at Freeman now. He looks back. He sees the ball short. Tommy Orr looks back late. He's out of the play, and Freeman is almost able to come up with a big catch right there, which would have been a huge first down for Virginia Tech. Crowd coming to its feet. Freeman, dangerous game-breaking receiver. Virginia Tech leading 7-0, first quarter with 6.13 left. Third down, 29. A little confusion here. Virginia Tech has the ball, it's Brian Edmonds. But the penalties are coming here. Mountain Air Field, Steve Perkins may have moved. He made the tackle on Edmonds. This one looked like a, a different version of the fumble ruski. The snap was never cleanly received from DeShazo. It was on the ground, and Dwayne Thomas picked it up and turned it into a draw play. Terry Monk has things sorted out. Have a dead ball foul. Illegal snap on the offense. Still third down. Five penalties, 39 yards for Frank Beamer's Hokies. And we talked about penalties and the part they play in field position. And right now, the Hokies are, are killing themselves with penalties. And Frank Beamer is not a happy man. Frank has a chance to run West Virginia out of its own ballpark, but look what happens. I don't understand why that's called an illegal snap. I think he was just trying to snap the ball when he felt the pressure coming across to pick up an offsides penalty. I don't see a penalty there. Third to 34, they try to throw back screen. It's not there. DeShazer does the right thing and throws it away. And they will not call him for intentional grounding. Scott Gaskin, some good pressure. Good read by DeShazer. Punning situation for the Hokies. Dodging a bullet, the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Very well read by the Mountaineer defense. They were expecting screen. I mean, it's third down in a country mile. They tried to set up the screen. Perfectly defensed by West Virginia. DeShazo had nowhere to go with the football. Mike Baker averaging close to 11 yards per return. We'll get this kick from Colley. And we'll take it at the 16. Dances, buys some time, buys some room. He's got a wall. And a saving tackle penalty flag, though, back at the 24-yard line. Tackled by Vernon Dozier. <laughs> there were some huge blocks on that play, though. Mike Logan, a freshman defensive back, number 23, came in with a big lick. That was the first block that sprung Baker. Outstanding couple blocks, but obviously one block that was not completely legal. There was some hitting on that play, though. Watch right there. There's the play. Tim Brown trying to crack back. Somebody's helmet came off. I think it was that. Brown's the helmet. <laughs> Against the return team. First down. Another block in the back and a legal win. Stops play. 5.48 to go. 7 nothing Virginia Tech back after these messages. Well, these uh, for his ball club and same with Frank Beamer. Let's explain one play though. Jim Pine was involved with an illegal snap, they called it. Well, the reason they called it was because it never hit the quarterback's hands. It went through his legs, bounced on the ground, and another guy picked it up. As we look at the average gain on first down, that's going to be a key throughout this ball game. Ed Hill in motion. Give it to Robert Walker. Gives up, gets up close to the 19-yard line. Hank Coleman, Jeff Holland, Dwayne Knight in on the stop. A look at the Hokie defense. Lewis, Basham, Holland, Knight, Del, Del Rico, and Brown, who's a terrific hitter. Leader in tackles on this Hokie ball club. Could be an All-American. Drakeford will be an All-American, picking up from last year. Second down and five. Kelster under pressure again. Delivered. Complete first down to number five, Ed Hill. near the 35-yard line. When you have a quarterback who can buy himself some extra time, who can get outside the pass rush, all that does is that gives him a greater opportunity to make completions because no defensive back in the country can cover a guy for four, five, six seconds. When he eludes the rush, he gets out there. That allows his receiver, Ed Hill, to just find a way to get open. Nice job getting away from the rush by both of these quarterbacks today. First attempt, first completion. Nothing doing up front for Rodney Woodward. 
number eight is in on the stop, Bernard Basham. And some help from number 56, Lawrence Lewis. Both teams trying to calm down. There have been some big plays pulled back in the game thus far. 7-0 Virginia Tech. Balls at the 37-yard line. Second down. And 10. Got to get outside this walk. It's across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Stacey Henley, the strong safety, makes the initial stop. Talked about Ken Brown, the starting inside linebacker, number 44. Made a great play there, just running across the formation. And, and his great speed is really the key for him. That's, that's his greatest asset, his ability to chase down plays. That time he came all the way from the left side of the defensive formation, made the play on the opposite sideline. 3.39 and counting, left first period. Dick Kelsner and West Virginia down 7 up into the Hokies. Complete. That's number seven, Mike Baker. And Baker wrestled down by Tyrone Drakeford at the 37-yard line of Virginia Tech. 21-yard gain for Baker, his 10th catch of the year. First down, West Virginia. I think this was a blown coverage. Kelsner sees there's no one out there on Baker. Drakeford is way away from the play. Here's Stacy Henley coming out to try to make the play. Drakeford was nowhere near the receiver, and that was obviously a blown coverage, a blown blitz coverage by the Hokie defense. Good matchup, bottom of your screen. Drakeford for Virginia Tech against Kearney. They run it inside, though. Woodward inside to the 30, loses his helmet. Brought down by George Del Rico. Good stick inside there. Some help from Larry Green. Rodney Woodard is a guy who's happy to be back feeling almost 100% healthy. He's had two bad ankles that he's been struggling with the last couple weeks. Jimmy Freeman's actually been getting more carries. Nice little delay rush. They get the rush coming upfield and a nice draw play. And Woodard uses his strength. You don't think they're popping down there? Helmets are flying off on every other play. Second down and two, the seventh play of this drive that started back at the West Virginia 14. Woodward. Not a lot of room there. Stacy Henley there. Waverly Jackson. Redshirt freshman out of South Hill, Virginia. Don Nealon wants to see his ball club get on the board here. They're averaging 41.7 points per ball game. Number one in the Big East, number five in the USA. You mentioned earlier what coordinator Phil Elmation said about Waverly Jackson, that people don't know who he is till after the game. I'll tell you what, a couple more games this season and people will know, because he's a big old guy, 6'3", 288, playing real tough on the inside for this defense. Abraham in motion, give it to Walker. First down and more for West Virginia. Tackled by Dwayne Knight, number 20. Mountaineers moving. Penalty flag on the play. And it's against the Mountaineers. Don Nealon's ball club. We have an illegal shift against the offense. Two men moving, and neither was set. Repeat third down. Let's take a look at George Del Rico, the middle linebacker. He's used to fullbacks coming out on him, but look, it's a center. Dale Williams, a big body, just throws him right out of the hole, and that opens up the path in there for the first down, but it's coming back with the penalty. Five-yard penalty. Third down and six now at the 32-yard line of Virginia Tech. Mountaineers with the ball, down 7-0. 122 left first period. Kelsner, got time. By some more, throws it to the end zone. And it is intercepted at the one-yard line. Antonio Banks came up with it. The big kick for Virginia Tech. And 
Antonio Banks makes his third interception of the year. Not bad for a freshman starting at free safety in his first year of college ball. Now watch Jake Kelsner. Watch this nice job of eluding the rush. Little sidestep, buys himself some time. Now this ball's in the air a long time, and Banks comes all the way from the middle of the field, and he just had a beat on that ball all the way. The ball had to travel too far. And Banks was able to step in front of the receiver, Kern. Ball inside the one-yard line. That was the first pick of the season of Jake Keltzner. Another West Virginia drive thwart, thwarted as Thomas comes up the middle, picks up a couple. Dangerous play there. You hand the ball deep to your tailback when he's, he's already six yards lined up in the end zone. You got to have a lot of confidence in your offensive line that they're not going to get any penetration. Thomas is able to bang it out to about the three-and-a-half-yard line. Jitter Tech Hokies, second in Big East scoring, and to 38.3 per ball game. They lead it 7 0. Joe Swarm on top of it. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Tim Brown, Jimmy Tomior make the stop. Well, they go with the fullback. They caught West Virginia shift, and they went on a quick count. The defense wasn't set, and they got some good blocks right away. Dwayne Thomas, the tailback, is leading the play this time. Give it to your fullback, and he bangs out a big first down for the Hokies. The DeShazo did a nice job using the quick snap count that time. Caught him moving in their defense. Joe Swarm picked up 11 yards on that carry. Averaging 4.9 yards per carry. An injured Mountaineer on the field being attended to. It's Puppy Wright. The linebacker, number four, out of Jackson High School in Miami. Out of town scores, Syracuse leading up at the Carrier Dome over Boston College early in the first period. Down in Texas, Tech leading A&M. Texas A&M a few weeks ago put up 73 on Missouri. Mountaineers last week beat Missouri 35-3 here at Mountaineer Field. Not a lot of depth for Don Nealon's West Virginia linebacking crew. And they can ill afford to lose Puppy Wright. He's got an injured right knee. We can see right at the end of this play, it looked like his right knee just kind of buckled on him. And then Jim Pine is going to fall on top of him. You can see him right there going to the ground in the center. Number 73 is going to end up on top of him. A little extra weight, extra pressure on the leg. Puppy Wright. Favorite linebacker, Seth Joyner from the Philadelphia Eagles. And he had 280 pound Jim Pine fall on his leg. So West Virginia sees its quarterback, Jake Keltzner, intercepted for the first time. Banks came up with the pick. Just, just stay, I'll take the play. Just Virginia stay Tech doing the job on the ground. Tech leading 7 0. 37 seconds left, first period. Dave Sims, Todd Blackledge, good to have you with us at Morgantown, West Virginia. Virginia Tech has racked up 58 yards on the ground on 11 carries. Come out in the eye formation. Another audible at the line of scrimmage. Swarm and Edwards in the backfield. Give it to Edwards. Riding running back across the 20 to about the 22 yard line before Wes Richardson brings him down. Final seconds here in the first quarter. Watch the block here by the fullback, Joe Swarm. This is what sets it up. DeShazo goes to a quick toss. Now he's going to lead out. Swarm's going to lead out. A good block on Mike Collins right there. That opens the hole. And Thomas gets his shoulders turned again. Not very flashy, but he gets his shoulders turned to the hole and takes it north and south. An exciting first quarter completed here at Morgantown. Our score, Virginia Tech 7, West Virginia nothing. We'll be back with second quarter action after these words from our local stations. For Jake is just the fact that he's, he's just seen things more often, experience. He's, uh, he's always had some physical talent, but now I think he has an idea what, he, what we want of him. Kelsner suffered his first interception to stop the most recent West Virginia possession. A couple of big plays, Todd, in that first quarter. He had a kickoff return of 95 yards wiped out by a legal block, and then Virginia Tech had a touchdown taken off the board. Shazo to Sanders TD pass because of the penalty. The excitement, though, continues to build here at Mountaineer Field. Folks still coming in, too. Frank 
Beamer, seeing his club get six penalties in the first period. And the referee, Terry Monk, discussing, warning both clubs about some possible, about some infractions. First quarter stats. And uh, the rushing yards, a little bit of an edge to Virginia Tech, but the total yards is where they have the big edge, the big advantage, Todd. A couple big plays, a couple big passing plays on third down. That, that's a surprising thing. And of course, the two turnovers, that's been the story so far. Second down and three play, Edward Slips. Wes Richardson. We're told that the field judge on the Virginia Tech side, Howard Curry, incurred an injury, and he will be unavailable for the remainder of the game. That's why we saw Terry Monk letting the head coaches know what is going on. Here's a third down play and another big one for Virginia Tech. Third down and two. This shows a quick drop, throw, complete it. Outside for the first down to number 82, Jermaine Holmes. Holmes coming off a 40-yard catch last week in the game against Maryland. Aaron Beasley on the coverage. And again, just a, a little bit conservative on the outside that time by Aaron Beasley. A lot of cushion, third down and two. All you need is a, is a short throw, and Beasley way off on the outside makes that an easy throw for DeShazo. They lined up in a two tight end formation and just and just made a quick three step drop. Seventh play of this drive, which began at the one yard line after an interception. There's Swarm trying the right side. Gets across the 30. Wes Richardson makes the tackle. Harry Hawkins, number 99, also in, involved in that play. Barry's a returning starter. Played through a bad ankle last year. At West Virginia front line, defensive front, averages six foot three, 256 pounds. The Hokies offensive line goes 6'3, 293. Second down and nine. Ball at the 30. Give it to Swarm to keep him alive. And DeShazo got crunched. Matt Tafoni put a big lick on DeShazo after he gave up the ball. Well, that's what you have to do. If you're a defensive coordinator and this quarterback is hurting you with his ability to improvise and make some plays, he fakes the option and you're responsible for the quarterback, go ahead and put a lick on him. I mean, it's, it's a legal hit. You just want to discourage him from, from being so aggressive getting to the outside. Virginia Tech started this possession after an interception. Third and seven at the 32. Three for five on third down. DeShazo, floppy ball, seven picked off by Tommy Orr. He had it. Intended for Dwayne Thomas. Great pass rush by Terrace Alexander, number 44. That's what caused the timing to be broke. He's going to come from the top left. 44 gets around the outside. Now that throws the timing off. Now the ball's tipped. And almost intercepted. Good pass rush, good coverage by the Mountaineer defense. Robbie Colley averaging 39.7 yards per punt coming into the game. Boy, he loops this one. He sends Baker all the way back inside the 20. Nice run to get up close to the 25-yard line. Goes Mike Baker. 53-yard punt by Robbie Colley, an eight-yard return. We'll be back to Mountaineer Field after these messages. Party of the Big East Football Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference is prohibited. West Virginia taking over now at the 30-yard line. Don Nealon's club had a kickoff return of 95 yards wiped off the board. This coming right after Virginia Tech had taken the 7-0 lead on the DeShazo TD pass to White. 
You know, this Virginia Tech defense, uh, it, it looks the same as it always did. They used to play the wide tackle six. It's a 4-3 now. The difference is they attack upfield with their linemen rather than read and react on the line. But they're still very much an attacking defense. Robert Walker, he pays the price. Flying up the middle, Jeff Holland, Wayne Knight. They make the stop for Virginia Tech. BC. You know what? That could be a high-scoring game before it's all over. Georgia Tech, Florida State. Florida State, of course, warming up for Miami. No score there. Tech over a &M. Clemson leading down in the ACC. Michigan in the Big Ten ahead. Second down and seven. Here's Kelsey with time. Deep middle. Double coverage on Carney. Picked off by Drakeford. Outstanding play. An All-American played by Tyrone Drakeford. Second pick by Kelsner for Kelsner today. I will say this. If you want to throw the interceptions, uh, these are the way to throw them. Throw them deep down the field, but I'm sure that's not what Jake had in mind. Tyrone Drakeford has 4-2 speed. Now, as long as this ball's up in the air, Drakeford runs under it like a receiver, looking to find the ball, and he turns and he catches that just like a wide receiver. The ball coming right over his shoulder. Great speed. He's been a great interceptor. That's his first one of this year, but I'll tell you what, he's second in all-time history of Virginia Tech in career interceptions. That's his 16th now in a, in a very impressive career. First and 10 at the 21. Trying to get outside with touchdown, Tommy Edwards. Tommy gets up to the 24-yard line. Richardson brings him down. John Browning there to number 93. Wes Richardson. Bethel Park, PA, best run-stopping linebacker for the Mountaineers. West Virginia has turned it over three times. Kelchner with a fumble and two interceptions. Second and seven to 24. Great pick to Shazer. Got the first down across the 40. Aaron Beasley finally ties him up. Give a lot of credit to the fullback, Joe Swarm. 19 yards on the run. Well, credit to fullback and also credit to Shazo for leaving the ball in his stomach. Watch how long he leaves it in the belly of the fullback right here. Rides it all the way in. That causes Alexander to crash down. Now, nobody takes the quarterback. You can see they're going to fly out to the pitch man, but nobody picks up the quarterback. And to Shazo, a nice job running in the open field. Right here, I thought he was going to break it back to the outside and use that block by his receiver, Brian Still. Still a big run for the quarterback. Got to go left side. Not much happening there. The previous play, give credit to Brian Edmonds with the fake. Another tackle for Wes Richardson. Edmonds with the carry this time. I'm impressed by the efficiency of Virginia Tech's offense. They are not fancy. It's belly option football. Give it to the fullback. Give it a, a lead play to the tailback. Run the option. But what they do is they say, hey, we think that we're physical. You've got to line up and show us that you can stop our basic things. And, and they stick with it. They have great confidence in what they do offensively. Second and eight at the 45. Tommy Edwards. Couldn't get out of trouble. Looked like he was going to break through. Tim Brown wouldn't let him. Brown had six tackles last week against Missouri. Leading tackler on the ball club last year. That's the counter trap play, the, the play made famous by the Washington Redskins where you pull the backside guard and tackle. And, and that play is getting more and more difficult to run pulling those backside linemen because of how fast defenses are getting. You can see the speed of West Virginia's defense that time just shut that play down. It's too slow in developing. Here comes the crowd on a long third and nine for Virginia Tech. Tech leads 7 0, second period. The shades up. Behind Freeman, did they give it to him? No, they wipe it off. Side judge said no. Said he trapped it. Freeman slipped, but made a super effort to come back and get a piece of the ball. Well, we've seen a couple guys slip down. Of course, Virginia Tech maybe not used to this Astro turf. Freeman has slipped twice now trying to come back to the ball. The ball's thrown a little bit behind him. Looked like he got his body under, but you can see that ball bounced on the turf, bounced back up into his chest. Nice effort by Freeman, but DeShazo really to fault there. Didn't get the ball out in front of his man. Colley nailed a 53-yarder last time out. Here's Baker inside the 15. 
Good stick at the 18-yard line. 45-yard punt, a return of six yards. 9.27 left. Second period, Virginia Tech up by seven. We're back after these words from our local stations. You know, my mom and papa took us cheering all over the U.S. of E. in this final. Howard Curry, who had to leave the game with a torn Achilles tendon. Keltzner, difficult day thus far. This at the 19. And that's how this walk. Look at Virginia Tech bring that baby out. Nice play, George Del Rico finishes things off. Antonio Banks, the free safety, started. George Del Rico, he's the guy who's going to get the final nod on the tackle. But watch Kenny Brown, 44, shoot across the line of scrimmage, elude the block. Now, he almost makes the tackle, but he does just enough to slow up the ball carrier and allow his defense to string it out to the sideline. Great aggressive upfield rush that time by Kenny Brown. Loss of two on that play. It'll be second down and 12. On at the 18. Catch there with two interceptions and a fumble so far. And a stick in the middle on Walker. Number 59, J.C. Price out of Dunkirk, Maryland. Oh, what a great play by Price, too, Dave, because Walker had a lot of running room. They were blitzing from the outside. The defensive secondary was all spread out. And if Walker breaks this one tackle, he runs for a long time. Let's take a look at it from the side. You're going to see they get an upfield rush to the outside. Now, J.C. Price is going to come off his block on the inside and make a good stick in the hole. But if he's not there and if he can't hold on to that tackle, Walker runs for a long game. Virginia Tech has run 32 plays from scrimmage. This will be number 18 for West Virginia. It's a biggie. Third and 11. Kutzner under pressure. Delivers complete, but it'll be short of a first down to Zach Abraham, number 47. Dwayne Knight, number 20, with the coverage. And that'll force yet another punt. For the Mountaineers here at home, and Don Nalen and company are concerned. It's one of my real pet peeves, too, as a quarterback. Even if you're not the primary receiver, if you need nine yards for a first down, don't break your route off at seven. Sauerbrunn's punt, a big one. At the 24, it's Freeman. Good coverage by West Virginia. Number 23, Mike Logan, penalty flag. On the play, a 49-yard boomer by Todd Sauerbrunn. Sorting things out, the official Terry Monk. Illegal block in the back, under a turn. 10-yard penalty, first down. That is a popular call today. A legal block in the back. They'll hear it in their sleep. Eight minutes left. Seven nothing. Virginia Tech. First half. Back after these messages. You've got to attack the course. On this punt return, Cornelius White, number four, is going to come down and make a block in the back. Now, the reason it's not a smart thing to do, there's nowhere for Freeman to go anyway. He didn't get much of a block. The play wasn't going to go anywhere, but at least don't make that block, and your team starts their possession outside the 20-yard line. You make that penalty, now you're back on your own 14 with a long way to go. That'll be scary, not pretty for either ball club. First and 10 at the 14. Shazo, screen right side, Freeman. 20. And knocked out of bounds. Jim Petrovich, number 63, did a good job getting out to help Freeman, the left guard. Nice fake by DeShazo. He's going to fake the, the handoff, and he's looking the other way, and that causes the secondary to kind of float back into the middle of the field, and no one's out there with Freeman. You see Collins had to run all the way out from the middle of the formation. That was due in part to the nice fake by DeShazo starting the play off the other side. Sets up a second and short for DeShazo. Second down at two at the 22. Pitch it back outside. Edwards. First down, Virginia Tech. Up close to the 25-yard line, Barry Hawkins makes the stop. Number 99, and Steve Perkins, number 97. 
Boy, a nice run by Dwayne Thomas. That play looked like it was stopped for a loss of three or four yards in the backfield. But Thomas was able to get his shoulders turned square, run right up the field, and pick up the first down. That's a heads-up run. Looks like a, a run that a veteran guy would make. Thomas is only a redshirt sophomore. He's not a very old guy, but, but he made a veteran move on that one. Significant numbers there. West Virginia has the edge, but trailing. Here's DeShazer in trouble. The lose. Balls up for grabs. Should have been picked off. David Mayfield had it. Second time he's had his hands on the ball. Good pressure up front. Tim Brown all over DeShazer. Well, DeShazo again kind of lost his balance. He, he was shaking a little bit coming out there. They try to run the play action, and he trips right there coming off the option fake. And again, the timing is disrupted. He tries to come up with it and gets hit right in the midsection as he's uh, attempting that. They tried to throw on first down, which was smart. It's only their third attempt on first down. But he got away with one there because Mayfield should have come up with the interception. Second and 10 to Shazo. Ball got tipped again, incomplete, intended for number three, Steve Sanders. Steve Perkins, number 97. Again inside on DeShazo. And Frank Beamer's club up 7-0. Had a touchdown taken off the board back in the first quarter. As did West Virginia. They had a kickoff return taken off the board because of a penalty. 7-0, 7.07 left. Second period here at Morgantown. Crowd obviously trying to get into it here to support their defense. The West Virginia defense has come up with a lot of big plays here after that initial touchdown. Split backs for the Hokies and in motion. DeShazo straight back to throw. Flushed out. Sack and a great play by Scott Gaskins, number 67. Well, DeShazo went to the well one too many times. He's been doing a nice job eluding the rush to the outside. You're going to see his initial look downfield. There's nothing there. He leaves the pocket. Wiley forced him out. And look at the, the job by Gaskins. Got him right around the ankle. And you don't think he's happy because he's seen DeShazo get around Wiley a couple times. He says, not this time, fella. Self-made player. Made himself quicker during the offseason. Here's the punt. Baker at the 48. No flags as he gets inside the 40. There's a late flag right at the West Virginia bench. Happened after Baker was run out of bounds. Cornelius White, number four, involved on the play. The punt, 41 yards, a return of 12 prior to the administration work right here. Same play. We have seen that is the play with, that has dominated this ball game, Todd. Yeah, it has. It, uh, just about every special. Illegal team. block on the back. On the return team during the return. 10-yard penalty. First down. We may have more of those penalties than points. Virginia Tech up a touchdown. We're back after these messages. These are for the Mountaineers. We invite you to stay with us for halftime. We'll take a look at last week in the Big East. Jim Pine, the center of attention and stats and highlights. First down and 10 for West Virginia. And it's on 44. The reverse got fouled up. Kelsner running for his life. Del Rico's got him. Delivers the ball downfield to Hill and incompletion. George Del Rico with an outstanding pressure, number 41. Antonio Banks, number 27, covering for Tech. This is such an attacking defense Virginia Tech has. Now, this is a defense that got five sacks on the Miami quarterback in their game against the Hurricanes. They hit quarterback Frank Costa 15 times in that game. They're getting great initial rush, and that's causing Kelchner to come off his primary target early and having to leave the pocket. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Don Neal and his staff are ruining all these penalties. What they do is they line up eight guys in the box. They have eight defensive players in around the, the in between where the two tight ends would line up in an offensive formation. Then they blitz and they come from different places and they really never give you the same look two times in a row. First and a couple of mountains for the Mountaineers. Here's Walker trying to get some back. Antonio Banks, number 27. Todd Blackledge will put you put some pressure on you and myself as we will pick the Big East Football Conference TV Network 
player of the game. Coming up later on, so stay with us to see whose star shines. The highest and the brightest as it starts to, starts to brighten up just a little bit here. No sun breaking through, but some clouds, a lot less thick. Moving in. Second down, 19. Also for 34. Kelsner completes it to Abraham across the 45. That will not be good enough for a first down. Ken Brown, number 44, on the coverage. Abraham out of Wheeling Park High School. You know, they're not going to get the first down, but on second and 24, it's a good call. They're just going with an intermediate route. You can see they dropped into zone coverage, and Abraham gets right in between the linebackers. Now, yeah, they don't pick up the first down, but now at least they give themselves a chance on third down because now it's third and five. Rather than go for the whole bundle, get a little bit of it back, give yourself a chance on third down. Third down and five. Here's Kelchner. Good stop. Nice job by the linebacker, Dwayne Knight. Gonna call it an incomplete pass. Another good play by Stacey Henley, who forced the play originally, and then Knight finished it off, and Kelchner looks like he's hurt. Kelchner got popped again with the Dwayne Knight comes from the outside. He comes from the backside of the quarterback. He's like a strong safety. It's like a strong safety blitz. He's listed as a linebacker, but he only weighs 207 pounds. And he got a full head of steam and took that right into the midsection of Jake Kelchner. That hurts, I'll tell you. Dwayne Knight, we showed you him in our tease with a stick he had last week. Sauerbrunn with the punt. Sounded good, is good. But it's into the end zone. A uh, touchback for Todd Sauerbrunn. That's a punt of 51 yards. 31 is the net. We said that this would be a test for West Virginia in that the Virginia Tech Hokies come in having been better tested against the Miami Hurricanes. So far, Virginia Tech is answering the call. I want you to see this. West Virginia is going to go play action to their left. Now, they have a blitz picked up if it comes to that side. But they blitz. Virginia Tech brings the blitz from the opposite side. Kelsner never sees it coming and takes a big lift on, the, on account of it. They round the fullback up the middle. Ryan Edmonds. The carrier, and he gets a couple of yards on that play. Next week, join us live from the Meadowlands Giants Stadium. It'll be the Boston College Eagles against the host, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Join us at noon next Saturday, October 9th. John Browning, number 93, the ailing Mountaineer on the field. Good-looking day starting to happen here, we hope, as it's brightening up here at Morgantown. Threat of rain hopefully has blown over. Dave Sims, Todd Blackledge with you. Our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. 422 left in the second quarter. And we had early fireworks with Virginia Tech. First drive, scoring on a DeShazo to Cornelius White TD pass. 9.51 left, first period, 7-0. The ensuing kickoff was taken back 95 yards by Jay Kearney of West Virginia, but it was wiped out by an illegal block from behind. And Virginia Tech also had a TD pass taken off the board, DeShazo to Sanders. And since the TD pass, DeShazo 2 for 8. You know, we know just from walking around this campus the last couple days, you got to be in pretty good shape. There's a lot of hills, a lot of climbing to do. This stadium, we're up high, and uh, it's it's kind of a, a hike getting down to the field from here. Not only do the players have to be in shape here today, but the band has to be in shape. I'm looking across the stadium, and, and they sit in the upper deck right across from where we are in the booth. They got a long way to go down to, to perform for halftime. Take a look at that. I have never seen a band, <laughs> and this is a large band. For West Virginia, they undoubtedly are making their, their way down to the field. And they have to conserve a lot of wind, I guess, to, to up there <laughs> on their way down to the field to perform at halftime. Taking a look at Mike Collins now, the strong safety, the big play guy. And, and you know, he made a play last week that, that you just can't teach a kid to make. I want you to look at this. In the game against Missouri last week, Missouri was threatening. The game was close early. Now watch, this is a 270-pound fullback. Collins is going to stand him up and instinctively rips the ball out of his arms. 
It's a big guy that was carrying the ball loosely. Collins rips it out and takes a, a play that, that looked like was going to be a touchdown for Missouri, turns it into a 97-yard uh, fumble return by Mike Collins. And that was just a play that he made by instinct. I mean, you know, he saw that the guy was carrying the ball loosely, reached in there and ripped it out, turns it into a big play for his defense. And, and he's been the kind of guy who has made those kind of plays throughout his career here in Morgantown. Captain on the defensive side. As we look at John Browning, a casualty this afternoon. Elsewhere, Virginia leading Ohio U 7 0. Mississippi State, Florida, and the SEC, Michigan on top of Iowa. Second down, six at the 24. DeShazer got time. Throws, and it's incomplete. He underthrew his receiver, number 17, Brian Still. So since the last, since his TD pass, DeShazo, two for nine passing. Clemson leading North Carolina State. Check over AM. Florida State has not really opened up there, and that's a big game for both clubs, BC and Syracuse. Third to six at the 24 for Virginia Tech. Tech leads it 7 0. Three for eight on third down plays, and he crosses the 30 yard line. Make it four for nine. The carry by Brian Edmonds. Nice call by Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator. It's third down and six. They go with the, the handoff to the fullback off the option. They threw the ball on second down. They come back and go with the dive to the fullback. West Virginia's thinking run. They get an upfield rush, and that springs him into the, into the uh, secondary. Brian Edmonds picks up the first down. Good play call. Good mixing things up on third down. Mayfield and Collins had to make the stop. First and 10 at the 32. Sky's frightening here at Morgantown. Get outside with Renault White. He slips back at the 25-yard line. The pressure by Steve Perkins. Loss of seven on the play. Renault White earlier in the game had a big run from scrimmage. I think what we're seeing in this game so far, Dave, is two defenses that have very good quickness, good speed as an overall unit good penetration and they both can get upfield come after the quarterback and they can stop things in the back but they both have the ability to make some big plays and to knock you out of your rhythm second and 17 the Shazo knocked out of his rhythm right there Barry Hawkins number 99 number 67 Scott Gaskins Wes Richardson all involved there Again, they tried to go with the fake off the counter trap. Now, this is a slow developing play. You're pulling a couple linemen. By the time DeShazo comes out of his fake, West Virginia is through the line. They get great penetration, and Maurice has nowhere to go with the football. That's, that's caused by good, quick athletes getting penetration at the line of scrimmage. West Virginia calls a timeout on the play. Hawkins out of Mount Joy High School in Marietta, Pennsylvania. Now, this guy here was an, was an outstanding punter in high school. And you look at that guy, it's kind of hard to picture him being a punter for a high school team. Doesn't look at him. You bet. It's 6'4", <laughs> 280. He's a senior. Dave Sims, Todd Blackledge with you. Our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week at Morgantown, West Virginia. Virginia Tech leads after a DeShazo to Cornel, Cornelius White TD pass. Back at the 951 mark. First period, 7-0. A look at Jim Pine, captain on the offensive unit. Not allowed a sack coming into this ball game. 6'2", 280 out of Milford, Massachusetts. And he is an All-American candidate. We talked to Frank Beamer about what Pine brings to the Hokies ball club. He's really an important part of our football team. Of course, he's where it all starts offensively, and I think he is where it all starts. Uh, you know, I think he's the best in the country, uh, best center in the country. Uh, tremendous player, uh, and he just, he's just he got quickness, he's got strength, he's got football smarts, he's an intelligent guy. He just does it all for us. And uh, captain of the football team, we think a lot of him. It's, it's number 67, Scott Gaskin. Another big play with help from Barry Hawkins as Gaskins and Hawkins starting to take over on that West Virginia forward line. A big loss on the play. Well, again, good penetration, good upfield rush, third down and long yardage. You're expecting pass. Nowhere to go with the football, and by that time, Gaskins was able to get off the block and make a big play. Here's Collie's punt. Mike Baker deep for West Virginia at the 40. 
Can't turn the corner. Not bad on the coverage. Cornelius White helped turn him back in with some help from Shane Miles. A 45-yard punt return of six yards. And, and the people were clapping because there's no penalty for the first time, I think, on any return of a kick. I mean, we, we've had so many, and those penalties are so costly. I made the point earlier, the reason they're costly is because they kill you in terms of field position. Your offense is geared up to come back onto the field around the 50-yard line. You get one of those penalties, all of a sudden you're back looking at a long field to go to try to get any points on the board. West Virginia, good field position again at the 45, down 7-0. The draw to Walker. Good stop. George Del Rico, Ken Brown, make it happen. And you hear a lot of discontented West Virginians here at Morgantown with a minute inside a minute 50 left in the first half, and the Mountaineers down 7 0. Again, we invite you to stay with us for halftime. Last week in the Big East, take a look at that. Jim Pine, who we just spoke of, and stats and highlights. Here's Kelsner, second down. Crossing pattern, not there. He threw it behind Mike Baker. We threw it behind Mike Baker because Baker was not open when he was initially looking there. That's a three-step drop. It's a timing pattern, a quick slant. He loaded up the gun to throw it the first time, and it wasn't open. And by the time that he went to throw the football, that window was closed. That's a quick-hitting play, and it's only open for a brief instant. Good coverage by the Hokies. Kelsner struggling today. He's fumbled once, intercepted twice. Four for eight, 60 yards, his numbers. Good play here, third and eight. Right out to the left. Delivers. It's complete to Curry. It's short by about a yard or two at the first down. They wipe it off as an incompletion. Tyrone Drake for covering. But again, now I don't understand this. Now, Jay Kearney's been a great receiver this year for West Virginia. He didn't catch this ball, but even if he catches it, it's not enough for the first down. You've got to be able to adjust your route a little bit. It's third down and eight. Why run a seven yard out pattern? Take it past the first down marker, then come back to the football. I mean, you know, I don't understand. Even if he catches the ball there, it's still not a first down. Sauerbrunn with the punt, going to the wide side. Freeman makes the fair catch and does so at the 12-yard line. 41-yard punt by Todd Sauerbrunn. We're in Morgantown, West Virginia, with 122 left in the first half at Virginia Tech. Making that 7-0 lead hold up. Upcoming games in the Big East next week will be at the BC Rutgers game at Giants Stadium. Miami and Florida State, a huge game with national rankings on the line. And you see the rest of our schedule for next week. Swarm and Edwards in the backfield for Virginia Tech. Edwards gets a block and a hole, cuts back against the grain. Plus the 25-yard line, that's good for a first down for the Hokies. Mike Collins has to come up to make the stop. Right now, if you're Frank Beamer, you don't want to do anything dumb. You, your team has played pretty well. You're on the road, and you've got the lead. No sense getting caught with, a, with an interception at this point in the game or at this point in the field. Run the football. Another good effort by Dwayne Thomas. Tim Brown makes the stop. Dwayne Thomas, fluid runner. Sort of reminds you of Dwayne Thomas, D-U-A-N-E, with the Cowboys years ago. You can look at Jim Pine. He's going to get a little bit of a block. But look at the block by the fullback, Joe Swarm. He comes flying in there, gets a great block on Elige Longino, the outside linebacker, to open the hole. You just have to have a certain mentality when you're a fullback in this kind of an offense. This is power football, kind of a throwback to the 50s, 60s kind of football. And you got to have a fullback, a guy like Joe Swarm, an overachiever, guy who just, you know, same kind of guy that would run down on kickoffs, just sacrifice his body play after play. Some collision, Swarm and Richardson. got to be a dream come true for this young man. He, he came to Tech as a walk-on back in 89, and now he's a starting fullback in his final season, and he's a captain on this football team. Correct? And that will do it. 30 minutes complete here at Morgantown. West Virginia had seven drives in the first half, and six times they went kicking the field. As we continue with a look at some of the statistics for our first half, the quarterback breakdown, DeShazo, 7 for 17, 85 yards, 
One TD, no interceptions. Look at the interceptions for Kelchner. Threw for just 61 yards, and he also fumbled in addition to those two interceptions. Take a look at some of the keys to success that Todd talked about at the beginning of the game, and they've held up pretty well here, Todd. Well, they really have. Turnovers has been the key. Three for West Virginia, none for Virginia Tech. That's caused the lead for the Tech team. Field position. We've seen a lot of penalties in the kicking game and some bad problems with kick coverage. So far, that's worked out to the advantage of Tech. And first down efficiency is the only one that's not playing to form right now. West Virginia actually averaging better on first down. A lot of that due to the fact that they're mixing it up a little bit better run pass. Out of town action. Good one up at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse was down 10 7. They've come back to take the lead. Florida State has opened it up on Georgia Tech at the half. AM over Tech in the Southwest Conference. And the ACC, Clemson leading NC State. And the Big Ten, number eight, Michigan over Iowa. And Mississippi State and Florida, a tie. Down in the SEC. Down in the swamp. I don't think Florida's lost there since Steve Spurrier's been the head coach. UTEP and North Carolina tied. Ohio State, yeah, that might be an interesting game. Northwestern's feeling good about itself these days. You know, this will only be the second kickoff for Virginia Tech. The first one was returned for the long uh, touchdown that was called back by Jay Kearney. And one thing I noticed, Ryan Williams did not get very much height on that ball. It was a very low line drive kick. And when Kearney fielded it, the Hokies coverage team was still a long way from being near him. I, I would look for him to try to either get more height on this ball or kick it away from Jay Kearney. Kearney, number 18. Boy, did he do a job after the Virginia Tech touchdown in the first half. Here's the kickoff by Ryan Webb. Second half action underway here at Morgantown. Kearney at the nine. Good pops there, and he stopped at the 21-yard line, and a good high kick allowed for some good coverage. Jermaine Holmes with the stop. You normally just think about hang time when you're talking about punting, but it really is effective in kickoffs, too. You need to get good hang time to allow your guys to run down in their lanes and be in position to make good stops on coverage. When you kick a low kick, I'll tell you what, that really hurts your coverage opportunities. Graham, Robsock, Williams, LeBlanc, Flick, and Ryan across the front for the Mountaineers. Jimmy Gary will start the second half as the tailback. Jim Freeman at fullback. Ed Heal in motion. Give it to Gary. Not a lot going on there. Left side. He took number 69 for a ride. Number 59, J.C. Price. J.C. along with Waverly Jackson, number 98. Gains up to the 24-yard line. Balls at the 24, second down for the Mountaineers. Second down and seven. Feel in motion again. The penetration in the backfield and the outstanding play by George Del Rico. He knew that was coming. Well, they ran a blitz. They guessed right. Again, a lot of being a good defensive coordinator is calling the right defense at the right time. Just guessing right is what it boils down to. They had Del Rico lined up on the outside. He was coming on an outside stunt. He beat the block of the fullback, Freeman, and is in there for a big play. Freeman didn't have much of a chance against Del Rico. Second of tackles coming into this ball game out of Seabrook, Maryland. Third down, 16. Balls at the 15. West Virginia starting the second half, down 7-0. 13-40 left, third quarter. Kelsner with time. Pump fake, pump fake. Going deep down the sideline. Abraham's got it at the 40. Breaks a tackle to the 30. First down, West Virginia at the 28-yard line. Tyrone Drakeford finally brought him down on a big play. Kelsner to Abraham. 57 yards. Jake Kelchner is going to get great protection here. Now he's got a mismatch. He's got a wide receiver, Abraham, working against a linebacker. That's Dwayne Knight, number 20. Knight can't find the football. Abraham finds it, waits on the catch, and turns it into a big play on third and long. You get a wide receiver working against a linebacker. That's in your favor. Even inside, Freeman powering over left tackle. J.C. Price brings him down inside the 25-yard line. 
Jim Freeman, six foot two thirty-eight, a senior out of Central Catholic High School in Lima, Ohio. Eight of five on the play. Staff looks on. Freeman. It's room. He's across the 20, close to first down yardage. Check that Rodney Woodward came in and Kenny Brown, George Del Rico make the stop for Virginia Tech. So the big play, a 57 yarder. Keltzner to Abraham. As West Virginia threatening. Here's what the Mountaineers have done in the red zone coming into this game. Pretty effective. Eight runs, two passes, four scores. Here they've got a third and short. They gotta get to the 19. Hill in motion. And Gary and Keltzner bump Brown Del Rico. They make the tackles. And boy, does that hurt the Mountaineer cause. Third and short, the quarterback and the tailback bump into each other. They're telling Nalen to go for it. Well, again, you've got young running backs in with John Jones out with a broken leg. You've got Jimmy Gary, a sophomore, and Robert Walker, a redshirt sophomore. A little bit of inexperience that time and, and just a busted play. Gary took the wrong path and ran into the quarterback, Kelchner, and now they've got to go for the field goal. 38-yard attempt for Sauerbrunn, who's two for four in the season. Kick is up, and he hooks it back in. Nicely done by Todd Sarver. And the Mountaineers are on the board. The 11-20 left, third quarter. Virginia Tech leads it 7-3. We're back after these messages. The second half of today's Big East football. Does a nice job to get to the 32 before he's brought down. Mike Logan, number 23, with the stop for West Virginia. Help from Keith Taparowski. That's a surprising kick by Sauerbrunn, too, because he has the ability to kick the ball out of the end zone almost every time on a consistent basis. That ball was kind of popped up in the air. Yet another penalty flag. I think the majority of our penalties have occurred on special teams plays, too, on, in the kicking game. We've had about five or six illegal blocks from behind. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. Only three men on the side of the kicker. Penalties declined. First down. That's one of the new rule changes this year in college football. You have to have at least four guys on each side of the ball. They've tried to change that to make it a little bit safer on onside kick attempts where teams used to load up ten guys on one side of the ball. Swarm and Thomas in the backfield behind DeShazo. First and ten at the 31. Thomas, big hole. Closed up quickly. Mary Hawkins, number 99. Nose guard makes the stop for West Virginia. West Virginia is a four-man defensive front, but every once in a while they put somebody right over the center. Jim Pine has his hands full this time with Barry Hawkins. Gets a good block, is able to take him down on the ground, but Hawkins did a nice job standing him up in the hole initially. Good pancake block by Pine. Second down and six at the 34. 7-3 Virginia Tech, early third quarter. Wiley presses, but the delivery to the tight end. Good for first down to John Burke. Run out of bounds at the 47-yard line by Tim Brown. Nice 13 job. 13-yard gain as they move to six. Nice play fake by Maurice DeShazo. Good patience on the fake. That's what really sets it up. That's what fools the linebacker Brown. Watch how he pauses. Nice little pause, look back, and that allows his tight end to slip right out and give him a good throwing lane. Excellent fake by DeShazo, and the key to that was that he was patient. He didn't rush the play. Freeman, there's a look at the tight end, Burke. Freeman and Sanders to the bottom of your screen on this first and 10 at the Tech 48. They show blitz. They run it. Touchdown, Tommy Edwards gets up to about the 49. Wes Richardson, another stop for West. Boy, he's been active. Number 41 for the Mountaineers. West Virginia's blitzing on first down. These are run blitzes. They're not nece necessarily blitzes to try to sack the quarterback because Virginia Tech has been predominantly a run on first down, so they're blitzes to try to stop the run. You can see they get eight men up around the line of scrimmage, and they just have too many bodies in there, and Virginia can't, Tech can't block them all. It's a run blitz in order to stop the running play. A 
Virginia defense up tight. They run it. Hard. Nice play by Scott Gaskins, number 67, to stop Tommy Edwards. Wes Richardson again in on the stop. Richardson, third leading tackler last year with 76 for the Mountaineers. Crowd coming back into the game here. Mountaineers down 7-3, 9-23 left third quarter. Big East first game of the season for the Mountaineers. Second for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech moves the pile, but it will be shy of a first down. It was Joe Swarm carrying Barry Hawkins a couple of yards on a conservative call, and Virginia Tech will punt. Well, that's the second time on a third down and six situation. They tried to pop the fullback through there. They, they made the first down the first time they tried it. That time, West Virginia was ready for it. Comes up with a big stop. David Mayfield deep to receive this punt from Robbie Collins. This is the kind of punt right now where you want your guy to really help your defense, pin him down deep, which he looks like he's done. Mayfield, fair catch at the 12. For West Virginia, number 30, David Mayfield. 33-yard punt by Robbie Colley. 7-3, Virginia Tech over West Virginia. We'll be back. The thought was to get more speed on the field because uh, you know, we really felt like that was important. And to attack more upfield. We've always been attacking defense, but now we're attacking more uh, upfield, which I think is important the uh, way football is going today. Brought in Phil Elmation, his new coordinator came from Syracuse, and, and that is the difference. It looks the same. They still got eight guys around the line of scrimmage, but their defensive linemen are more hard charging upfield. Ranking upfield to the 20 yard line. Jim Freeman, George Del Rico with the tackle. Help from Antonio Banks, number 27. Good game by Freeman. He gets up to the 20, picks up seven. Really, I think, a good way to attack this defense because they do line up eight guys around and they get great upfield pressure. A good way to attack them is with your fullback. A quick hitter, maybe a quick inside trap. Try to bust something quickly. Better struggle for Kelser. Gives it to the fullback again. He's up close to first down yardage. Jim Freeman, number 29 for West Virginia. Bernard Basham makes the stop. And it is good for first down and a crowd into it with the Mountaineers down 7-3 at home. First conference game this year for the Blue and Gold. Now would be a good time for West Virginia to try to go for a play action pass. You can look right there. West Virginia, 13 rushes, zero passes. Now's a good time. You ran two plays to get a first down. They run it again. Jimmy Gary runs through number 74, Jeff Holland. Gets up to the 30-yard line. Kenny Brown finally finishes him off, but Jimmy Gary, an explosive run there. Well, I say it's time to, for a play-action pass, but when you can run for eight yards, you don't need to pass the ball. I mean, that's, that's great effectiveness on first down if you can gain eight yards. Now you got second and two, and it gives yourself an opportunity offensively to run or throw. You can take a shot at a big one here. See, Virginia Tech up tight. Blitz. Gary stopped at the 30. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Basham with help from Hank Coleman in on the play. Jimmy Gary at Okeechobee High School in Florida. We were talking earlier in the season, Todd, you can't have a college football team these days without some folks from Florida. No. No, they're turning out great athletes. In fact, West Virginia, interestingly enough, has 18 scholarship guys out of the state of Florida. That's an awful lot. It certainly is. Third down, two. They're going to run it again. Gary picks up the first, holds on to the ball. First down, West Virginia. Antonio Banks and number 58, Cornell Brown, make the tackle. Matt Mears move the sticks again. Well, they're doing it on the ground. They're running right beside, behind the right side. Jimmy Gary, he takes a good angle this time on a short yardage situation. Sees a nice little crease to the outside. Gets his shoulder square. Look at him. He still was having a little bit of trouble trying to put that ball away. And Virginia Tech, Cornell Brown was going after the football there. Gary actually kind of lucky he held on to the ball that time. Gary's fumbled once in the last two games. Each of the last two games. Play after Kelsey. Out of time. Sideline. Double coverage on Curry. No, sir. 
Good coverage by number 43, the freshman Larry Green out of Port St. Lucie High School in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Well, that was excellent coverage by Green. The thing that he did so well there was, and a receiver, if he allows you to do this, this is a good technique for the cornerback, is to just continue to run the receiver out of the play, run him out of bounds off the playing field. Watch as this ball's in the air. Kearney's going to allow Green to just kind of run him right off the field. Okay, no interference. He just he dictates the course the receiver has to go, and if Kearney catches the ball, he's out of bounds anyway. Take a look at the freshman. Second down and ten. Double wides, top of your screen. The sprint out by Kelsey. In trouble, gets away from Brown, throws it. Almost caught. Number five, Ed Hill got a hand on it at the 42-yard line. Tyrone Drakeford covering for the Virginia Tech Hokies. And Here's Kouchner getting up, a late hit. Penalty flag on the play. Well, Kouchner took a good lick here. I think it was Hank Coleman, number six, that's going to get the lick. Good rush by Ken Brown. And then after he throws it, clearly a late hit. Hank Coleman and the referee right there to make the call. Personal foul, roughing the passer against the defense. First down. That's it. Another one of those momentum killers. You know, you have a great defensive play there on the on the running play, then you get a good pass rush. And look, Frank Beamer knows. I mean, those are the kind of plays that really hurt you right there. Let him throw the ball. You're in good position. He's not going to make the completion. But now you put us in a, you know, you give them a first down and they're across the 50-yard line. Those are those are tough penalties for a defense. Seven penalties, 64 yards for Virginia Tech. 7-3 tech over West Virginia. On the fullback, he slams down close to the 45-yard line. The fullback, Jim Freeman. Knight makes the stop, number 20, along with Larry Green. Here comes Jake Kearney. Got to think at some point they have to get him involved in a deep pass again, Todd. Well, they tried to go to him on that last first down play. West Virginia right now looks like they are playing the same kind of offensive football Virginia Tech wants to play. Power football. Stay with it on the ground. Clock at 5-15. Third quarter. Jimmy Garrett, big haul. Left side. It scoots ahead. Runs over his own man, Rich Graham, the left tackle. And he's picked up first down yardage. They've moved the sticks again. The Mountaineers on a drive that started back at their own 13. What West Virginia's doing right now, not on every play, but they're bringing two tight ends into the formation. They're bringing an extra body, an extra blocker, a big guy in there, and they're kind of balancing up this defense. They get a good push on the left side. They run behind their big tackle, Rich Bram, right there, 78. And Gary picks up the first down. But one way to offset this quick penetrating defense, bring another tight end in, balance out the line. Kelsner avoids trouble. Tenth play of this drive. A little more trouble to the 30. Cuts back into trouble, but a good game down to the 30-yard line. Jeff Holland brings him down. But Kelsner with a big play for West Virginia. Well, this is one of the, the marks of a resilient quarterback. If things aren't going for you exactly the way you want, throw in the football, make a play doing something else. Great job eluding the rush at Dwayne Knight. He just kind of feels it coming and then turns it into a positive game. Big hole, Freeman, one man to beat, steps out, Travis, down to the 10. Drakeford brings him down, fumble, who's got it? Virginia Tech takes over. What a heartbreaking play and a big one. Dwayne Knight with the recovery after Jim Freeman got inside the five-yard line. Tyrone Drakeford made it happen. And you see the stunned West Virginia fans. I don't think that Jimmy Freeman tried to celebrate or anything like that. I think he just relaxed at the last minute. And a great strip by Virginia Tech. West Virginia denied. Virginia Tech will take over. Leading 7-3. We're back after these messages. If he thinks he's got it made. He has no idea Tyrone Drakeford is coming from behind him. That's an NFL-type corner play by the senior co-captain from Camden, South Carolina. Look at this strip play. At the end of the play, he turns a devastating run into a big play for his defense. That could be the biggest play of the game. Here's Virginia Tech. He's down on the top. It's on the top. It could be a safety. It is. Right 
Well, the first half was a defensive struggle. There's no reason the second half shouldn't be as well. Excellent penetration on the line of scrimmage by the West Virginia defense, and they come up with the big two-pointer. Let's take a look at this. They don't go to the deep back. They give it to the fullback, but great penetration by Joe Pavian and Buddy Hager come in there 95 and 51. They beat the lineman to the point of attack, and they come up with a big stop. Todd, you remember earlier when West Virginia had turned the ball over. Virginia Tech started in the shadow of its own end zone. They came out with a similar play and did manage just barely to get out of the end zone. Yeah, they certainly did. They got out of the end zone. They actually made a first down on the next play. We're at Morgantown, West Virginia. Our Big East game of the week, and it's turning into a wonderful defensive struggle. It's Virginia Tech leading 7-5 over West Virginia with 353 left third quarter. West Virginia went on an 11 play, 8, 11 play, 86 yard drive with 441 off the clock, but fumbled inside the five. Virginia Tech tried to run it out, and Edmonds was stopped in the end zone for a safety at 7 5. What you've got to be careful with now if you're Virginia Tech, you can't have a letdown. Robbie Colley's got to get a good kick here on the free kick. He's kicking from his 20 yard line because you're going to put the hand, the ball right back in the hands of either Jay Kearney or Mike Baker. You've got to get great hang time and good coverage. Don't give him the ball inside the 50 yard line. Not that great a kick. Baker at the 32 left side. 45, 50, 45. Carries the pot to the 42 yard line for West Virginia. This Mountaineer crowd into the ball game now. 344 left, third period, 26 yard return. It's Virginia Tech 7, West Virginia 5, and West Virginia threatening. We'll, we'll be right back. Motion and intensity. Look at him take it right into the chest of William Farrell, number 25 for Virginia Tech, and just drive this return all the way across the 50, across the 45-yard line to give his offense great field position to start off. Baker is a guy that I, Don Nealon is so happy to have back. He's a big play guy, yes, but even more so, he has great attitude. He's a great leader on this team, plays with wonderful emotion, and that's something that, that he exhibited right there. Here's a keep it on the ground, Jimmy Carey. Goes ahead for a couple. Ken Brown, number 44, makes the stop. 104 yards on the ground this quarter alone for West Virginia. Don Nealon's ball club down now by only two. 7-5 with 3.24 to go. That's saying something, too. Run, running the ball that effectively against this defense. Virginia Tech held Miami to only 54 yards rushing on 34 attempts. So they're a good run defense. Counselor. The after. That road down the sideline. First step, run to the party out of bounds at the 20 yard line. First and 10, West Virginia. Nice. Knocks him out of bounds, but a big play by Jake the Snake. A nice call by Mike Jacobs, the offensive coordinator. First option West Virginia has run. They give the keep to the quarterback. They take the fullback away. They take the pitch away, but nobody takes Kelchner. And Jake knows what to do with it when he runs the football. He's not beating him with his arm right now, but he's beating him with his legs. 22-yard run for Jake. Five carries, 47 yards. Only motion. motion. You bet. Right before the snap. That carry by Freeman. Dropped by number six, Hank Coleman. Dead ball foul, false start. On the offense, still first down. Right now, that adrenaline for the uh, Mountaineers flying. They got both Charles Washington, the backup tight end, and Rich Bram on the left side for movement there. And again, West Virginia going to some power football on just about every other play. They're going to two tight ends, and that's a real power set. One wide receiver, two tight ends, two running backs, and kind of ramming the football right at Virginia Tech. This time they come out in the pro set with two wide outs. First and 15, ball at the 25, Hill and Motion. Kelsner to draw to Gary, tripped up nicely. Tripped up nicely by J.C. Price, number 59. He just got a piece, and it's a good thing he did, because Gary looked like he had a lot of room. No gain on the play. 
Take a look at the way it looks from behind Jake Kelchner. A little draw. They get a good upfield push by the defense, and you're right. If he doesn't get that tackle right there, J.C. Price, again, Jimmy Gary has a long way to run. One thing with this defense, they get such a great push up the field that if you get through that front line, there's some room. Same play, nothing there. Hank Coleman is there. Number six, Cornell Brown is there. No fooling the Hokies on that one. You're right. That charge. Looking for the run. West Virginia's having a great quarter running the ball, pretty good yeah, between the tackles. And Phil O'Mace is seven. Under pressure, got a man down in the end zone. Going for Abraham, and that's a little bit too long, incomplete. Abraham had the step on the defender, Stacy Henry. And a good idea, I really think, with that situation, third and 15, rather than try to pick up the first down, go ahead and make a throw to the end zone. They got a nice matchup with Abraham going against Henley, who's a strong safety. He's not a starting cornerback. He's a strong safety. They had the matchup they wanted, just a little bit overthrown. Here's Sauerbrunn. They're going to tee it up at the 34. 44 yards for the lead. Straight it up. Put it in the box. West Virginia takes the lead. Forty-four yard field goal by Thompson. Taken by Drinker. Almost went out of bounds. Sideline. Tyrone Drinker. Two men to beat. Cuts inside. And Tyrone Drinker puts Virginia Tech right back in business. Knocked out of bounds by Aaron Beasley. No, did you see the hit by Sauerbrunn? Sauerbrunn got a big hit on the side. <laughs> we talked about this kid being a linebacker. Wow, what a hit and what a great return by Drakeford. Look, he does a nice job finding the sideline, almost stepped out, regains his composure, and turns it into a 42-yard return. He's got the great speed. Right here, it looks like he might go all the way. Now watch this. Beasley runs him out. And look at this hit. Boom, that's a kicker. <laughs> I love it. Give it to the fullback, Joe Swarm. Bangs ahead for a couple of yards. This is the best starting field position for Virginia Tech. Buddy Hager, number 95, makes the stop. Big game here at Morgantown. Under threatening skies, it's 8-7, final minute, third quarter. West Virginia with eight points here in the third quarter to take the 8-7 lead. Virginia Tech trying to come right back. Second down for the Hokies. And penalty flags all over that as they were going to run the reverse with Freeman coming to the bottom of your screen. You're exactly right. They were trying to go with the reverse. They weren't all set. Dead ball foul. Illegal snap on the offense. Still second down. Big crowd here in Morgantown loves that. Frank Beamer seen his club penalized now eight times for 69 yards. Tommy Edwards, Joe Swarm, here in the backfield for the Hokies. Second down, 13. Gustazo, buying time, got a man down the sideline, wide open at the 10. And he'll score. Number three, Steve Sanders, touchdown Virginia Tech. The Hokies have struck right back again. We have seen Maurice DeShazo throw three touchdown passes today. Two of them have counted. One has been wiped out by a penalty. And on all three, he's done the same thing. He has eluded the rush. He's bought himself time. And he's made a nice adjustment off the scramble with his receiver. We have seen Maurice DeShazo throw three touchdown passes today. Two of them have counted. One has been wiped out by a penalty. And on all three, he's done the same thing. He has eluded the rush. He's bought himself time. And he's made a nice adjustment off the scramble with his receiver. Look, he gets around Wiley. Now Sanders turns it into a scramble adjustment, takes it deep. And Aaron Beasley's nowhere to be found. Look at Beasley looking back. He was totally fooled. Thought that there was a sack on the play. Sanders turns it into six points. 46-yard TD pass to Shazo to Sanders. Right now, as the receivers are doing a great job of breaking their routes and adjusting to the scramble. And again, that's something you can work on in practice. If a guy has an out route and the quarterback gets to the outside, all of a sudden that out route's no good. You turn and go up the field, and Beasley was stuck in the coverage short that time. First time this year, Tech goes for two to Shazo. Collins. In 
intended for number 34, Joe Swan. Conference game of the week. 13-8 Virginia Tech with 19 seconds left in the third quarter. And Williams will probably nuke this one from the 50. All right, Poochie. See if they can get good coverage. Logan at the goal line. 10, 15, 20, 30. Got Rome down the sideline and finally run out of bounds. Into Virginia Tech territory. Knocked out of bounds by Tommy Edwards. Second down, eight. Back into the outside, Jimmy Gary. Grabbed down from behind at the 41-yard line by Antonio Banks. That is good for a first down. Ten carries, 52 yards for Gary. That's through the third quarters. Turnover still playing a big part. Total yardage. West Virginia has taken the lead there. That was a nice play right there by Antonio Banks, the free safety, because there was a bear defense, eight men right up on the line of scrimmage, and he was the free safety. If he doesn't make that tackle, that's a touchdown for Jimmy Garrett. Charles Washington in motion. Kelsey looking that way. Throwing. Dropped by number five, Ed Hill, at the 35-yard line. Stacey Henley covering for Virginia Tech. And fourth they go at the Carrier Dome. The Orangemen have taken the lead back from the Eagles. It's 22-19, fourth quarter. Keep you up to date on that one. Jake Kelchner won for his last 18. Well, he's struggling, obviously, but that's a, that's a play right there where Ed Hill's got to come up with that catch. Your quarterback's fight to try to get back in a groove. He puts one on the money, you got to come up with the catch. Give it to the deep back, Robert Walker. He gets up close to the 35-yard line. Antonio Banks, number 27, makes the stop. 43, number We'll set up a 35. What kind of call do you look for here, Todd? Well, I think you got to throw the football. I don't think you're going to run the ball for six yards against this defense at this point in the field. I think maybe just a, a little out pattern. I think you're going to get man-to-man -man coverage out there. I try to just get a single coverage with either Baker or Kearney. And just, just enough to get a first down. Nothing real fancy. They turn on the lights here at Mount Learfield. 56,623 in attendance. Kelsner, booking pass. Good hit. The stick at the 25-yard line. First down to Nate Ryan, the tight end. The senior from Magnolia High School in New Martinsville, West Virginia. Thanks with the stop, and Kelsner has helped convert on this third down play. The Mount Lear's now four for 11 on third down. That pickup of 11. Third down and six, Virginia Tech went with an all-out blitz. Now the tight end's gonna come free, no one's gonna pick him up. The only guy who can cover him is the free safety, but he's 10 yards off of it. By the time he gets there, it's an easy first down for West Virginia. Good read by Jake Kelsey. Now here's Travis. And a saving tackle at the 21 on Rodney Woodward by Antonio Banks. Woodward was going for six. I'm impressed with Antonio Banks. For years in the wide tackle six, the free safety position has been the key position. You, you have to have a great athlete playing that position, a guy who can play against both the run and the pass. Banks is showing that today as a freshman. He's a guy who actually enrolled at Tech and started last January, went through spring practice, but this is his first real season. He's a true freshman. Thanks for two TDs to save tackle, save touchdowns last week. Two tackles and save touchdowns. And West Virginia plugs it up the middle. And there's a fumble, loose ball. West Virginia's turned it over four times today. They've done it again, number five. Virginia Tech takes over. Wow. Hank Coleman, number six, comes up with the football. Rodney Woodward with the carry, and he gave it up. He gave it up. West Virginia came in having lost eight fumbles. You can add to that. Look at the end of this play now. There's just all kind of bodies and reaching and grabbing going on in there. And Woodward's going to lose the ball right there. The ball's on the ground. And Del Rico comes up with the fumble. Just, just aggressive defense, ripping the ball out. Give it to Edwards, sweeping right side. Comes inside, takes a forearm to the helmet from Wes Richardson. Eight of about six. But they got to the corner on that one. Aaron Beasley in on the stop, too. 
Turnovers, five of them, count them, for the Mountaineers. And really, really with five to zero turnovers, it's amazing that West Virginia finds themselves only down five points in this ball game. I mean, they've really shot themselves in the foot with the turnovers, but still a touchdown puts them back in the lead. Second down, five at the 26. 12.07 left in the ball game. Edmonds falls ahead, takes a vicious pop at Barry Hawkins, and it's a wolf ticket being sold by Tim Brown. That's how these fights start. You make a good stick, you got to go on and say, yeah, I hit you, and then it goes from there. <laughs> Wolf Dickens, I like that. <laughs> That's an old Philadelphia. Okay, I'll hook you up on that one. <laughs> Big play here for Tech. Third down, about five. Ball's at the 27. Call it 34. Collins pitching, they show blitz. Play clock, down to six, to Zizzo. The pitch back, the Renault White, forget about it! Mike Collins with the play at the 22! We talked about Mike Collins' ability to make big plays, none maybe bigger than the one he made right here against the option. Just a great job. They got DeShazo to make the audible to the option. They had it perfectly covered, and look, Mike Collins, if he doesn't make that tackle, White might turn the corner and might pick up the first down. But a great open field tackle by Mike Collins. Booming punt by Baker. Gets a bounce, goes off the official at the 41-yard line of West Virginia. 10.45 left in the ballgame. Virginia Tech leading 13-8. We return to Morgantown after these messages. It's about an hour each way. But somehow in my Taurus, I don't mind. I've never liked storms. Now I don't really notice them much. Seems like everything's getting more streamlined. Wish I could say the same for myself. For so many people. For so many reasons. Ford Taurus. The best-selling car in America. Yeah, how far away do you think I can get in 72 hours? I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. For our 35th birthday, get a minivan for only $35 a day. With unlimited mileage, the smart money is on budget. Good to have you back here for our exciting contest. It's Virginia Tech trying to hold off West Virginia. They're doing it by five with 10.45 left in the ball game. Meanwhile, at Syracuse, 14.09 left. Look at that, Boston College by four. And we'll see the Eagles next week at the Meadowlands Giant Stadium against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Not a productive drive at all by Maurice Pichejo and Tech on that last possession. No, and I think what you're going to have to see Tech do in the remainder of this fourth quarter is I think they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more on first down in a breakdown right now they've run the ball 20 times they've thrown the ball two times they're not gaining more than two or three yards on first down and it's putting them in some very difficult situations when it gets around the third down good field position for west virginia at the 42 yard line good force on the plate del rico on the stop stacy henley came up and the mountaineer fans restless they wanted to see the ball in the air the fumble story for West Virginia. They've had five turnovers, three fumbles, one fumble by Kelchner, one by Woodward, and one by Freeman. Not much of a game there. Let's call it second down nine. 43 yard line. For the Mountaineers. 10-15 left in the ball game. Play action. Kelchner. Complete outside to number seven, Mike Baker. First down, West Virginia. Harry Green on the coverage. Mike Baker with the catch. We can see the secondary is going to give a lot of room to Baker. It's single coverage, inside technique by the corner. He's going to give that out route away. He's playing off about a 12-yard cushion, a nice throwing lane for Kelsner, and a good call on second down. That's an easy first down and an easy throw for the quarterback. Mike Baker, two catches, 35 yards. Here we go, first and 10 at the Virginia Tech 42. Woodward, left side to the 35. Take that, it's Freeman, Jim Freeman. Antonio Banks with the stop. 
and Antonio Novak's look a lot alike. 28 29 are big fellas and some good pops here, Todd. Oh, there's some outstanding hitting going on. Just a hard hitting fullback play up the middle. This is power football and power defense. I mean, they are flying around, and this Antonio Banks, this free safety, he's like a guided missile flying around the field, throwing his headgear at folks. Making it happen, second down and three. Play action, here's Kutzner. Got a man on the stop. Touchdown, West Virginia, and more. Completed to Baker's third catch of the day. Larry Green with the coverage, but they move the sticks. First and 10, West Virginia. Virginia Tech was offsides on the play, too, so that'll get waved off here. They'll take the play and the completion. Another good throw and catch. Just a simple out route against man coverage. Now, they, they, they've got the situation they want. Virginia Tech's got everybody up around the football. Kelchner now, I think, starting to feel it again a little bit. Just like a pitcher, you get in a bad slump there, you just got to hit some throws to kind of get your feel back, get back in a groove. Two nice throws in a row for Jake. West Virginia on the move. Kelchner's completed his last three. First and 10 for 25. On the option. Oh, 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 not for long. Oh, oh. Yes, indeed. Marcus McClung. Good afternoon. Vernon Dozier there, too. West Virginia's had some success running the option. The couple times they've run it this time, Jake's just going to run out of field. Marcus McClung comes off the block on the outside. And you're right, that is a how-do-you-do kind of tackle. Marcus McClung. You always hate those two when you get tackled like that on the other team's sideline. You know, and you got to get up quick and show that it didn't hurt or anything, but you're over there. You'd rather have, if you're going to get hit like that, you'd rather have it happen on your side. Get a few more blues and highs. First downs this half. Dominated by West Virginia. Walker breaking through into the secondary inside the 20-yard line. Larry Green, number 43, makes the stop on number 43, Robert Walker. The junior out of Huntington High School in Huntington, West Virginia. John Nealon and staff, offensive coordinator Mike Jacobs. You know, you talk both clubs, third down and five here for West Virginia. Big play. Kelsey. Walker. Short of the first down. Jeff Holland, big stop, number 74, helped by George Del Rico. Del Rico's getting up slowly. Big stop that time. That time the cornerbacks, instead of giving the cushion on the outside, they came up in a bump and run situation. They went with the power run up the middle and a nice stop in there by Jeff Holland. Virginia Tech's defense really only has two big guys. That's the two tackles, Holland and Bernard Basham or Waverly Jackson, whoever's in there. Timeout called by West Virginia. They have one remaining, as does Virginia Tech. We'll be back to Morgantown. Exciting finish, last eight minutes after these messages. On a fourth and two for Don Nealon's West Virginia Mountaineers. Well, they're going to go for it. I think the logic here, or what Don Nealon's thinking, with 8.08, your defense is playing great here in the second half. If you don't make it, they've got to start it inside their own 20, and you're going to get the ball back probably at least two more times. They've been able to run the football pretty well. Look for the fullback to get the football. Pratt comes to its feet. Fourth down and two at the 17. Rollout, Kutzner. He stops, cuts. First down, West Virginia. Jeff Holland with the stop. The drive is alive. A gutsy call by Don Nealon, and what an adjustment by Jake Kelsner. He had a one-man route out there. They're going to go play action bootleg. Now, look. He's hemmed in. There's two Hokies there, but he does a nice job instinctively cutting it back to the inside. He eludes the two safeties. Banks and Henley picks up an important first down for the Mountaineers. This play's ready to explode. As number 29, Jim Freeman gets inside the 10-yard line. Both teams have one timeout remaining, 7.35 and counting. Fourth quarter, 13-8, Virginia Tech over West Virginia. Hank Coleman makes the stop on that previous play. Play clock, just started. Wide side of the field to the right. Want to go that side, you think? 
Well, I think you're going to get a nice isolation on Jay Kearney against Tyrone Drake for bump and run coverage right now. Washington in motion. Give it to the fullback. Walker, twist snap to the five-yard line. Larry Green, number 43 for Tech, makes the stop. That'll bring up a second down, make that a third down. What about four? Current drive, there it is, eating up a lot of time. Out near field, crowd into this one. 6.30 left in the ball game. 13 8 tech. Walker, inside the five, should be good enough for a first down. Stacy Henley makes the tackle. I think we're going to have another fourth down situation again. I think they stopped them a little bit short. West Virginia just going with power football, two tight ends. They're just saying, hey, we're not going to get fancy. We're going to come right at you with our tailback, lead with our fullback. Good hit in the hole that time by Stacy Henley, the strong safety. And we've got another. Uh, Interesting decision for Don Nalen. Not necessarily going for it, but what play to call. You already used your, your rollout fake to play action. Got to come up with something different this time. They will measure. That's more than a yard. Guess they wanted to make sure, and the rain comes as the folks here at Mountaineer Field, 56,623, put the rain slickers on. Dave Sims, Todd Blackledge with you, 6.02 left in our game of the week. It's been a good one, and you wouldn't think so looking at that score 13-8, but it's been a lot of fun. A lot of good defense played, a lot of exciting play, a lot of big hits by the defense. I mean, this is a physical, physical matchup. They're going with the full elephant backfield. Woodward and Freeman blocking for Walker. Walker, first down West Virginia. Del Rico had to make the stop with Cornell Brown. Now Mountaineers keep it going. Well, they went with their big people and they ran to the side of their veteran offensive tackle. Graham, number 78, gets a good push, a good block off the line of the scrimmage. Walker follows him through the hole and picks up the first down. Rich Graham, a four-year starter, one of the captains on the team. Out there's Gap on the length of the football. Out there's in business. Down 13-8. About to kick the door down at the one-yard line against Virginia Tech. Frank Beamer likes to play straight up. Here we come, football, with Don Nealon's matching him blow for blow today. Same set up, big backfield. Woodward, Freeman, Walker, the deep back. Walker, hit hard in the backfield. Number 31 gets in there, Stacey Henley. When you get down in this part of the field, it all becomes a matter of leverage. Who gets the best leverage? Who gets penetration? On this play, first down on the goal line, Virginia Tech gets the penetration. Watch. You see all that J.C. Price, number 59, does is dive at the feet of the guard, Rob Sock. That stuffs up the hole and allows your jumpers, your linebackers, and your defensive backs to come in and make the play. Go wide here on this 14th play. I think inside, yeah, maybe go wide here. They're, they're just kind of selling out. Out. Did they buy a touchdown? Doesn't appear from the mark made by the side judge. Indeed, they have not. It is third down. Antonio Banks with the stop. Look at that. That's about a size five and a half away from six. Fifteenth play of the drive for Don Nealon's ball club. Down 13-8, 422 and counting here at Morgantown. No quarterback sneak here. You got less than a yard, a half a yard. All you need is a little bit of a push from your center, Dale Williams. Play clock inside of 10. Big backfield. So quick movement. Touchdown, West Virginia. Bradley Woodward.
Kelsner wanted to make sure he had the play right, ran over to the sidelines, just a little simple dive to the fullback, go behind your center, Dale Williams, your right guard, Jim LeBlanc, touchdown West Virginia, and fittingly that they get it on a power football play because that's what they've done here in the second half. Play two tight ends, run straight ahead, ISO type plays, get to the fullback, power football, and they've really grinded it out here in the second half. They're gonna go for two, First two-point attempt of the season, 14-13 West Virginia, and they burn their final timeout. That was some drive by the Mountaineers. 15 plays, 58 yards, covering 637. The throw a curveball here, Todd. Talking that they've been hammering in between the guards and tackles. What do you do here for this two-pointer? Well, I don't think you can just run the, the straight lead player, the give to the tailback in this situation. I think on a two-point play, normally you have one or two plays that you practice all the time for a two-point play. Uh, you can either pick which hash you want it on, where you want to run the play. West Virginia has elected to put the ball in the left hash for this play, so they'll probably run something wide to the right, whether it's a play-action pass or some kind of, I would expect, some kind of a pick play where they bring the wide receivers in from the right and try to shoot someone out in the flat for the easy throw. Ball will be on the near hash mark. Of course, I haven't been too good on my predictions so far today. I said they should have run quarterback sneak right there, and they give it to Woodard for the touchdown. Got to keep stepping up, though. <laughs> Nealon. Talking things over with Terry Monk. I think Don Nealon's upset that they might have gotten a, a fast clock on that particular play. They had to call the timeout because the play clock was down to four seconds. I think Nealon may be upset that, that they started the clock too soon on him and had to waste that timeout. That, that could prove to be a critical timeout. West Virginia has no timeouts remaining. Virginia Tech won. They're going to go for the two-pointer. Mike Baker wide out. Top of your screen. Matt now goes into the slot. Kearney. Coming in motion. Kelsey, hit play. From behind, hit. Number 58, Cornell Brown. He buried Jake Kelsner. So much for the two point conversion. West Virginia does take the lead 14 13. Well, Kelsner never sees this coming. This is the second time it's happened. Cornell Brown just kind of sees a bullseye on the back of Kelsner's jersey and puts the headgear right in the middle of the back. That might be my old baby special <laughs> for the day. Hello, Mama. 4.08 left. 14-13 West Virginia. Back after these messages. Every month, enter the world of fine interior design. Enter the fascinating world of architectural digest. View a pied-a-terre in Paris, a noted fashion designer's rustic Montana ranch, a renowned artist's Hudson River farmhouse. On Jake Kelsner. Jake does know what planet he's on, so he's able to talk to the folks upstairs. See him kind of stretching that jaw out, too, making sure all the moving parts are working. I'll tell you what, hits like that kind of shake up your whole body. And Edwards, watch this, go through the end zone. Another loop drop by Todd Zalvin. I think he was a little fired up. An incredible scoring drive by West Virginia. They took six and a half minutes plus off the clock. 15 plays and 58 yards. Hokey in a response now. They're down a point. Plenty of time, 408 left. Time of possession. Are you kidding me? 20 to 5. This is a key play right here, Dave. What they do on first down. Rusezo, pitching back to it all wide, turns the corner. Back to the at the 32. Scott Gaskins, and you hear the Hokie folks fired up as Tommy Orr helps knock them out of bounds. Nice job by DeShazo holding on to that ball to the very last minute before flipping it out there to Renal White and, and a big first down. They have not been effective on first down here in this second half. Update from Syracuse. Orange back in front by three. First and ten for Virginia Tech at the 33-yard line. Got to get outside. Not today. Tim Brown, Eric Wiley with the stop on number 29, Renault White. We talked about the speed of the West Virginia defense. Great job by Derek Wiley. Look at him. He kind of leaps over the block to the fullback. Now, he doesn't make the tackle, but he does enough to disrupt the play and get it on the backside of the play. 
Derek Wiley is a phenomenal athlete playing the rush linebacker position. Moved from a linebacker, he's actually a defensive end now. Great athlete. There are the numbers that Shazo will throw. Has got time. Has got a man open. Complete down at the 50. Knocked out of bounds. No, knocked out of bounds. Not out of bounds. He continues down inside the 35-yard line. Steve Sanders. Too much cushion. Big play for Virginia Tech. 38 yards on the play. Well, there were a lot of things in effect in this play. Number one, great protection. Again, look at the cushion Beasley gives Sanders. He's backing up. He turns his back to the play. Thinks he's running a deep route. He turns it into a comeback. A lot of room out there on the corner now. Not only does he get beat, but he misses a tackle. And Sanders is able to turn it into 10 extra yards down along the sideline. Talk about a response. Here comes Virginia Tech first and 10 at the 31 of West Virginia. Movement left side. Yep. Left tackle Billy move. Kanati. He moved, and that will be costly for Tech. Those are such killer penalties. I mean, you know, you get a big play, and now you got first and 15. Their ninth penalty, seven Dead ball foul. Yards. Ball start on the offense. Still first down. Ninth penalty, 74 yards. Many of them have been killers. You look at the average game. They're having enough trouble at 2.9 yards per play on first down. Now they got 15 to go. A rollout by Mishazo. Picks up the block. Comes against the green. Intended for Ryan Still. Check that Steve Sanders. Sanders pays a price. Incomplete. Mishazo is very lucky because you should never throw the ball back across your body towards the middle of the field. I mean, he does a nice job getting out of the pocket and watch the blocks he gets gets for him. There's a great block on Wiley right there. He picks up another block right here by his fullback or his tailback, Renal White, but he makes a, a, a very unwise decision, throwing back across his body to the middle of the field. Lucky it was just incomplete. Sanders, short catches, 105 yards. Second down, 15 at the West Virginia 36. They draw the score. Nothing there. Wes Richardson. No, thank you says West. No weak stuff allowed on that big play. 33-29, relentless scoring in the Carrier Dome. Five and a half left in Syracuse. Wouldn't want to be a defensive coordinator in that ball game. Who has the ball last is going to be the ticket there. We'll see Steve Zabo, the defensive coordinator for D.C. We're back there next week to see D.C. at Rutgers. Big play, third down, 15. 36 of the Mountaineers. Shazo flushed out. Gaskins. He's going to take it down the run. He's got room across the 30. Hit hard at about the 27-yard line. Matt Tafoni, number three, with the tackle. He'll be short of a first down. Brian Williams. Coming into the game with a minute 30 and counting in the ball game. Williams marking at the 34. It'll be a 44-yard attempt. Williams, two for three on the season. Pass mark to the right. He's 0 for 1 from this range. The kick is up. Long enough. It's wide to the right. West Virginia has held. Mountaineers by one with 70 seconds left. And I'm going to tell you something, Dave. The thing that really hurt them right there is not necessarily the missed kick. It was the penalty on first down that put them back first and 15. They had no chance of getting the, the first down on their third down play. Now, here's the, the replay of the kick. He got a good leg into it. You can see, just like a slice, just like one of my shots off the tee. Sliced off to the right. No good, and here's Beamer. He knows they had a chance, but, but I really want to go back to the play. The play that made the difference there was the first down penalty that made it first and 15 because they had moved the ball, they had gotten a couple big first downs, but when you're first and 15, hey, it's tough to convert in that situation. That penalty came after a 38-yard pass to Sanders that put Virginia Tech at the 31 of West Virginia. The rain really starting to come down now. Yard drive goes for naught. That looks like a penalty against West Virginia. Frank Beamer said he expected a hard-hitting, low-scoring game, and that's Dead what ball we have. Foul, foul, delay of game. 
Offense. Still first down. Frank Beamer needs his club to come up with another turnover. They forced three fumbles today, five turnovers in all. Well, they can stop the clock one more time. They've got one timeout left. There's a minute, 10 seconds left. <laughs> the crowd booing. The fact that they have to put two seconds back on the ground on the clock. You'll see Virginia Tech, their players will be grabbing for the ball now, and it's a big factor now, Todd, with the rain, a slick field, and the fact that West Virginia's had three fumbles already today. Well, the first thing that West Virginia has to make sure of right here is the snap. And you see Virginia Tech's going to line a guy up right over the center and try to get a good contact right there. Virginia Tech, they nail Kelsner. Brown wants a flag. West Virginia get no satisfaction here as Virginia Tech calls its final timeout. In one whale of a ball game, Virginia the third Tech. Third timeout for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech opened up with a 7 0 lead on its second possession, 9.51 left first quarter. West Virginia came back with a 95 yard kickoff return by Jake Kearney. It was wiped out by a penalty. Later, Virginia Tech saw DeShazo hit Sanders for a six, but a holding call brought that back. It wasn't until the third quarter that West Virginia got on the board, a 38-yard field goal by Todd Sauerbrunn with 11.20 left. Then a tremendous play as Jim Freeman of West Virginia fumbled at the Virginia Tech one. Tech takes over. Edmonds was stopped in the end zone on the ensuing play. That made it 7-5, Virginia Tech. Sauerbrunn comes back with a field goal to make it 8-7 West Virginia with uh, a minute 24 left third period. DeShazo touchdown pass to Sanders, 46 yards, 13-8, with 19 seconds left in the third. Then what could be the winner, the Woodward one-yard run. 4.08 left in the ball game as Keltner moves ahead. That's the game now. And I mean, that will do it. Virginia Tech can't stop the clock again. All West Virginia has to do is, is run this clock down and run one more play. Just a, another quarterback sneak and the game will be over. All right, we've made our selection. Wes Richardson, number 41, linebacker for the Mountaineers, our player of the game. Look at that. Eight tackles, five assists, and I'm telling you, he stuck his hat on a lot of folks today. the numbers and West Virginia will remain unbeaten the Mountaineers coming away with a 14-13 win Mountaineers record now 4-0 Virginia Tech Hokies their record drops to 3-2 0-2 oh, in the conference and 1-2 on the road a terrific hard hitting game Jake Keltner made things happen. He completed his last three passes, all for first down. He threw for 153 yards and ran for 53 more. Well, and I really think that's the sign of what he was able to get accomplished today. He, he had a little bit of a rough day throwing the ball. He threw the two interceptions, his first two of the season. But he also knew that, hey, I can do some things running the football. I can make some plays that way. And he was able to, to kind of draw on something, some inner strength, make the plays with his legs until he got his feel back as a thrower. And the three key completions in that, in that last drive uh, really, really had a pretty solid game aside from the two interceptions. And the two interceptions, uh, they didn't hurt West Virginia. He threw them in positions on the field where it was actually like a punt. Deep down in the other team's own area, uh, ended up not hurting him at all. Virginia Tech had won the, their last two games here at Morgantown. That streak is over. Second time West Virginia has beat Virginia Tech. Beat them last year, 16-7. That's our story here at Morgantown, West Virginia. Take this time out and come right back to the final. West Virginia 14, Virginia Tech 13. We return to Morgantown Mountaineer Field after these words from our local stations.